Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking in. Thank you for your likes, overwhelming comments, positive, negative. They are always welcome apart from the insults. We don't take insults here, guys, because we don't insult people and we don't even intend to insult them. And so we don't expect them to insult us either. But by the end of the day, they do. And I'm surprised. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for coming back to be checking on me. I thank you so much for your support and love. Keyboard reactors, you're the best. Premier gang, you're the best. New subscribers, you are added in. Returning subscribers, oh my God, you people are just so amazing. Thank you so much for your overwhelming love. I really appreciate that. And have you checked my store, by the way, guys? Kindly do check anything that you might feel that is good for you. Pick it just to support this channel am carol and for those who haven't subscribed to this channel kindly do hit on that notification bell this one so that every time i upload a new video you'll be among the first people to be notified like this video like always premiere gang premiere gang premiere gang be liking my video during the premiere time please <clears throat> donate them donate the likes and be leaving your comments down below express yourself let's get down there and interact let's understand what is happening on these streets let's talk to each other and i just love the way you guys will interact with me i am so 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 happy that at least i have you people so without you people who am i you know so guys i just want to go straight to what is happening in the streets just a few hours ago this girl cherono who used to be Dimwango's friend in the Philippines. Not just a friend, but also a host. This girl, Cherono, hosted Dimwango for three good months in the Philippines. For those who are not there, kindly follow the story. Okay? That story is a very long story, but I'm just trying to cut it short because of time. All right? This girl hosted Dimwango for three months in her house. As she said in her video, she never asked Dimwango for food. She never asked Dimwango for water. She never asked Dimwango for Wi-Fi or to pay electricity bills or any other bill in that house. She never did that. Dimwango felt very comfortable staying in her house for three good months. This girl was learning to do YouTube. And so they were helping each other that way. And for that reason, she was helped or maybe call for subscribers, give a shout out and maybe I do a video together and stuff like that. And then she started growing. It is okay. That is what people do when they're together. Definitely. Right. But there were some other issues that she also, she also talked about before they broke up. At least by now, guys, you have known Dimwango. You know, we've been talking about her for like a whole week now. She will always leave your house, go out there, bad mouth you, burn the bridges. In every place she's been, in every place she's been, she's been doing this. And so who was Cherono? She did the same to her. And it was before that, no, it was after that, that also Cherono hosted African Tigress. And this is the moment when African Tigress learned that when Dimwango was at Cherono's place, she used to bad mouth African Tigress. Before, African Tigress didn't know. People have been blaming her for keeping quiet for so long. Also for her, she was shocked. When she came in, there were other girls, Kenyan girls, who are also studying in the Philippines living with Cherono, because also Cherono is a student in the Philippines. Okay? These girls are students. They are not travelers. They, you know, they don't find traveling their thing. They're doing whatever they, they feel it's good for them. YouTube being a part-time job for them. So when these other girls who are also staying with Cherono, after telling African Tigress what Dimwango has been Talking about her. African Tigress was like trying to deny it. Like, no, D cannot say this. It took her time to believe that true. This is what Dimwango said. She was shocked. And for some time, she's been trying to digest this whole thing. Because it was a long story, guys. 
it was a long, 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 long story. Because African Tigress, she's been like trying to understand, oh, last time when I was with Demuango, she was also bad-mouthing some of her friends. So it means every friend she meets, she'll go around, you know, bad-mouthing, talking about her in a bad way, burning the bridges and moving on. She gets a new friend, she burns the bridges, move on, move on, move on, move on. So she did the same thing to Cherono. And now, Cherono <laughs> has come out to ask her some question and also to give her some advice. Because Dimwango has been misbehaving on the streets since those messages came out and people have been talking about it. Even African Tigress herself has come out, but what is Dimwango talking about? Oh, they are jealous of my bikini. Oh, they are jealous of my body. Hello? Dimwango, come out and say something about these things. You're the one who wrote these things. Did you write them or they're fake? Because some other people are also, I saw some other reactors saying that anyone can do it. Maybe they're fake and stuff like that. Okay, Dimwango, come out and tell people if they're fake, they're fake. Let's take it. Dimwango is not talking. Dimwango is not saying anything, you know? And people are coming out. People are doing reaction over all that. African Tigress has come out. Sharon has come out. I don't know who will come out tomorrow. Jump to us. The man who was scammed of his house in Nairobi. He has come out. He's talking about it. In fact, he's warning the Jamaicans who are close to Dimwango. Even yesterday I had, I was not on her live stream because I don't even see why I should waste my time listening to someone who is coughing, coughing, coughing all over the place. I heard that people were there on her comment section asking her real questions. And because she could not answer that, those questions, she was busy telling her moderators to block those people <laughs> in the comment section. People are like, Dimwango, come out, tell us, what are we hearing? What are these things that people are talking about? Did you really do this? Did you really do that? Did you really do this? People were blocked big time yesterday. On her life, people are blocked and blocked and blocked and blocked. Why? Because people want to know the truth. People want her to come out and say the truth. Those messages are true messages. I wrote them. So what? Then we will know, okay. So you wrote them. It is okay. It's, it's, it's okay to write messages. It's not a crime, you know? Or those messages, I never wrote such messages. Okay? Then we'll know who to blame. But Dimango is not saying anything. She's only coming and twisting the whole story, trying to manipulate people's minds. You know? And for that reason, this girl comes out and she's trying to tell her, listen, this is how we started. I took care of you. You became so much entitled in my house. In fact, you started bullying or mistreating some of my friends who are close to me. The people that I used to stay with. And even some people or some of my friends who used to come around, you could misbehave in front of them. I could tell you, D, don't do this. You know, she's revealing some of the things that, that D was doing in her house. In all the three months that she stayed there. In fact, Cherono tried. I don't know, guys, if you are in the comment section, let me understand. Can you stay with someone like D? Not someone like D. Can you stay with D for a whole month? Like one full month. Can you stay with her? Can you? Just the way you see her portraying herself on the streets. How can she stay in someone's house for a whole month? And you can imagine she stays in this girl's house for three good months. And they used to go and visit Lola together. When they come back, Dimwango comes back, start editing her video, sit on the table. She doesn't know what she will eat. This girl comes in and start cooking. So this girl is saying that she was actually Dimwango's maid in her own house. Dimwango could not come back and look for something to help her to cook so that they can eat together. No. Dimwango comes back. When they have been shooting videos together, she wants to shoot her videos, edit her videos, and blah, 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 blah. And this girl is trying to see what they can eat in the house. So she basically became her maid. But by the end of the day, Dimwango is calling her wicked. Wicked is the word that she is using. 
Dear mama says, okay, whatever what happened happened and you left you went back to Kenya and you, when you came back, I said no, Dimongo, you're not coming back to my house. It was like enough was enough. This girl had had enough of Dimwango. The moment Dimwango realized that this girl doesn't want her in her house, she started bad mouthing her, telling people, "Oh, she's too sweaty. Oh, she's fat. Oh, she's lazy. Oh, she's this." Imagine someone that has been keeping you in a foreign land for three good months. Three good months you're not paying for anything. You start bad mouthing her calling her such names in every video she goes down to sit and talk she must mention those words my enemies enemy number one enemy she's been calling her enemy 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 for those who did not know who the mwango has been calling enemy number one every time she comes out with the live stream she's been talking about cherono and this is what Cherono is talking about. Now, Cherono says even after all those things had happened and she went back to visit Lola. We saw all those videos, guys. Cherono never knew that Dimwango had not bought a mattress for Lola. She never knew that. She just went to visit Lola because, you know, they've been on this course or on this project, both of them, for a long time. They've been going over there for a long time. She said, oh, let me go and visit that Lola. When she reaches in the house, she finds that there's no mattress. And she's like, whoa, let me go and buy a mattress for Lola and a bed. Dimango becomes so offended that why did you show people that I did not buy a mattress and a bed? And Cheron is like, what is the big deal? What is the big deal? That is where the whole fire started from. That is where all this enmity started from. Now, the questions are here that Cherono is trying to pull out, guys. Cherono is asking, D never explained why she didn't buy Lola mattress and a bed. She never explained that. Even after the video, she would have come out and say, guys, I, I was planning maybe to come back and buy it. Or it was, you know, maybe the money was not enough or whatever it is, it's acceptable. People can understand it. But what did D do? Instead, she covered it. <laughs> she covered it up by calling Cherono names. My enemies, that wicked girl, oh, blah, 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 all those insults that she started calling Cherono. Why? Because Cherono decided to buy the bed and the Lola according to the way they were communicating with Lola. You know? And she was like, Lola was trying to tell her how she can't sleep very well at night because she was sleeping on a board. On a board, guys, we saw all these things. We saw all those things. For those who didn't see these things, go back and check on the videos that Cherono did about Lola in the Philippines. She has done many videos also about Lola. Now, this was the trend. Then we noticed Dimango is not the kind of person who comes out to explain anything. When she's caught red-handed, she will come out and start insulting people, feeling good, feeling better than them, insulting them, and, you know, all those bragging and everything just to cover up what she has done. So when she came out doing the same thing, we were all not surprised, definitely, guys. <laughs> we were not all surprised. This Cherono is advising Dimwango, Dimwango, stop calling others names. Dimwango, what you are calling for others will come for you. Didn't I say that yesterday? You are sitting down, calling fire and, and all those things. Cursing people with your own mouth, sitting there, laughing like hyena, trying to feel better than everyone else. Talking about how you want to talk to people who are 400 and above. <coughs> who have you ever talked to that is over 400? Or maybe you just want to start now or what? Demwango. Even the millionaire himself. Papa Dante, he doesn't have 400 
thousand subscribers. He doesn't have. And we're all over him. The other day you are with Christmas list. He doesn't have 400 and above. Kino himself, you are with him. He doesn't have 400 and above. All the people you're meeting all the way, even when she was in Europe, everyone that she used to meet, no one was over 400,000 subscribers. No one. No one. Yeah? The people that she's been meeting, all of them, no one. So now she's dreaming of talking to people who are 400 and above. When she herself, she has not even reached there. Is that not just a cover-up? Anyway, let's listen to Cherono as she puts some wisdom into this girl's head. All of these names that you hear, every time uh, this girl goes into live streams, she has, I don't know, you will be like, you were there boasting the other day and talking about how they want to be like me. They can't even do a live stream for a straight two hours. But better part of those two hours, what were you really talking about? Is not inciting your followers to send thunder, send fire, send uh, earthquakes, send what? And then you will laugh. <laughs> the fire must be really consuming them. They are burning. Be careful what you wish for. You might wish, you might enlighten, you might ignite a fire and then the fire ends up consuming you. Be careful what you do. You'll be busy inciting your, and people are really, I was even, they were, what shocks me most is people are incited and they really go ahead and just send uh, the fire, the, the, everything. Come on, guys, you you come on heads. Why would you be wishing uh, thunder or, uh, or lightning to strike somebody? Is that something to wish someone? If not, and then you're calling somebody wicked. You're wishing uh, lightning to strike them. What does that make you? Let me understand it here. If I am just sitting here, have done nothing to you. And all of a sudden, you were wishing for lightning to strike me. Because according to you, I am wicked. What does that make you? At Cisco, we believe in what you do, not where you work. And we have the security to make that possible. I heard this phrase the other day, like, you call it people wicked. Unless wicked is a person you see on camera. Like if you see, if you are sitting and you are facing the camera and you see somebody and you are like, who is that wicked person? That is a person who you are looking at yourself in the mirror and that is a person you should see as wicked. And I don't understand these damn colleagues. Oh, wicked, blah, 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 blah. You want to say wicked. Actually, I'm even more focused. I don't even mind about being called greatest enemy or number one enemy. I don't really mind it. I might be your enemy, but you're not mine. Actually, for, for your information, you are, you are not mine. Like, I could, I could actually hate you. I could focus all of my energy to hate you. But then hating takes so much energy. It's, it requires a lot of energy. That I would rather save that energy for, for when I really need it. Can't waste it on you or hating you. The only thing that I feel for you is pity. Because according to you, you feel like everything, everything is about competition. You want to be like, oh, I have traveled over 50 countries. Some of them are just stuck in the country where they are born in. Or they have traveled to one other country and maybe to work and stuff. Not everything is about competition. Not everything. Like, okay, yes, you've traveled 50 countries and so. It's not like everybody, not everybody wants the headache and the stress that comes with struggling. When I was with you all this while, when you used to call me your friend, did you ever see me 
or hear me saying, oh, you know, I admire you. I really wish to be a travel blogger like you are. Did I once mention that? So what gives you the idea or the audacity to come and sit in a live video and say these people really want to be like me? Oh, they are talking about how much I am gifted. Oh, right now, as they're speaking, I've been gifted $160. Not everything is for competition. Oh, that was a good one. Not everything is for competition. Not everything is for competition. People live different lives. If you are living because of YouTube, you don't expect everyone to be living because of YouTube. People have beautiful lives out. I've said this how many times. Oh my goodness. People have beautiful lives out there. People have built big mansions out there. Not because of YouTube. People have better jobs. Well-paying jobs as well. But Dimwango just thinks that it's only YouTube that pays. She has never thought beyond or outside the box. She's only focused on it is YouTube, it is YouTube, it's YouTube. The other day I was asking you guys, if we wake up and there is no internet. The other day, we didn't have internet on YouTube. Like it was a worldwide thing. And she was also struggling to do her live. I remember I was also doing my life here and other people who are also complaining it was the same thing. What if we wake up in the morning and YouTube is nowhere to be seen? What will happen? <laughs> what will happen? How will she start coming back home to start with? She has already burned all the bridges. You know, competition is not for everyone. Not everyone wants to be a YouTuber. Not everyone finds pleasure into waking up, finding yourself in a different country every day, every day, every day. Not everyone, you know, wants to go out and start recruiting men to become YouTube partners. Not everyone wants that. Not everyone wants to live a passport sees life. People have different dreams. People have different goals in life. But this girl thinks that everyone should be living her life. If not, you are jealous of her life. You are jealous of her body. You are jealous of the food that she's eating. You are jealous that she's traveling I don't know how many countries. Traveling countries is not an achievement to everyone. If it is success to you, it's not success to someone else. And also remembering that people come from different backgrounds. People have different beliefs. People have different values in life. This is what Cherono was trying to pull into Dimwango's head. Now, she came out again and she was talking about hatred. And you know, these girls, they are so surprised that Dimwango has this kind of hatred in her that is so 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 intense you know i was also trying to imagine listening to her and i felt the heaviness of her words cherono says that <laughs> hatred takes so much energy and she said i can't waste my energy on such because imagine sitting there every day waking up Thinking of how you hate people in your life, including your family members. This thing can be so draining, you know. This thing can be very, very draining. So just trying to imagine, Dimwango, why are you like this, you know. She said, I've never wished to be like you. Just the same thing I was also saying here for myself. I can never wish to be like her. I don't want her lifestyle. I, I will never want that kind of lifestyle, like honestly. Today I'm waking up in a different country with a different man, another country with a different man, another country with a different man. I don't want that kind of dirty life. And for that reason, Cherono says, I don't wish to be like you. Guys, also in the comment section, people are telling me, people have been 
you know writing to me how i hate dimwango oh she's young and, and i'm hating her why am i hating her i can't hate dimwango i can't even manage to hate her i don't have the energy to start hating her i don't know her she only comes out here on the streets with a lot of drama and as a reactor i pick her videos and i react on them if you haven't understood that at least by now kindly Stop writing me useless messages in the comment section. I am a reactor. I have nothing to do with them personally. Okay, get that right in your head. Don't write me silly questions, you know. Why are you doing this, eh, this family or that family? Can't you see it with your, with your own eyes? Can't you see it? I'm only a reactor. Me, I just come out here, check on the videos that people are misbehaving. Or I, I just want to analyze them. I want to criticize them. That is my job. And YouTube allows me to do that. All right? If you don't understand what reaction is all about, go and Google it. <laughs> it's so simple. Stop disturbing my life. Uh -uh. Leave me alone to do my work. I'm busy doing my work. I have nothing to do with hate. I don't even have the time. I don't even have the energy, as Tirono says. I don't have it. Why should I pick someone who is, you know, Walking all over the place. In Swahili, we say manga manga. <laughs> Why should I pick someone who is manga mangaring all over the place and start hating her? Me, for what? I have a very beautiful life to live, guys. Allow me to be a reactor as I am. Pick these things from their videos. If they don't want us, reactors, to be reacting on them, then they should stop posting. It's so simple. Once you pull something out there publicly, expect anything. It's not your content anymore. It's public content. And anyone can do anything with what you have already posted. There is nothing that you can do about it. Because if there was something, then you would have been gotten there already. But unfortunately, there is nothing that you are going to do about it. So stop it, you guys who are writing me in the comment section, telling me blah, 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 blah. Kindly. Let's focus. <laughs> hey, guys, now, when this girl was talking about how she hosted Dimwango, I also wanted to give you this receipt because maybe some of you have not gone through what she was talking about or her video that she released a few hours ago. I might, I might just show you some of the receipts and then I'll send you to go and check on that video and listen to that girl very, very well. And try to understand what this girl is talking about. And also try to put yourself in her shoes. Then you can understand who Dimwango is. When she said that I hosted you, Dimwango, and you felt so entitled. You misbehaved in my house. You misbehaved. You felt so entitled. You started bullying some of my friends who are coming around. And even some who are staying around. Like she wanted to take over. You know? She is a control freak. Just like the, the brother back in the village. Control freak. They want to get into your house and they want to start controlling you. You know, they just want to start controlling you and controlling everything that is around you. And for me, that is what I hate. I hate people who feel so entitled to start controlling other people. Just because they have better subscribers than others what is subscribers by the end of the day what will subscribers do for you you know in real life leave alone the social life out here in real life what will they do to you or do for you you know let's listen to cheron like i mean you've gone like you've said you've traveled over 50 countries and in these countries you people have hosted you and instead of just saying a simple thank you, or you will say, oh yeah, I, thank God. I remember when you came to the Philippines, you'd be like, I really thank God I met you. You know, I did not been for you. I would have left the Philippines a long time ago. You know how, how hard it was for you in the Philippines when you first got here until you met, you met me. And I gave you, I hosted you for free. I treated you like, a, 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 like I was, I, we treated you like family actually. You were so free in my house. You even you were so free to a point where you can even 
uh, be rude to my other to my other guests. You look down on my other guests. And I remember I told you though, you don't you know, don't do that. In as much as maybe this person has faults here and there, but then you, you don't have to wrap it on their faces. You know? So tell me, you want to, like people, you go, people will host you. They will do different things for you. And then you, buy, like, instead of just appreciating them, you will go around and gossip them. You know, all of the people that have, that have hosted you, you always have something bad, something mean to say about them. So, the only person that you actually don't gossip is, is your brother. Other people, you do. I remember you, I know you know the kind of conversations me and you had. So I don't want to go into details. But please, all I'm asking you, all I am simply saying is, just keep me out of your, like, keep me out of your mouth. After all has been said and done, after all has been said and done, I rest my case. I rest my case because, guys, sometimes I feel like it's just too much. These are the same people that Dimongo used to bad mouth her mom with. They have all the receipts. It's only that sometimes they find it so unnecessary to talk about certain things because they are very sensitive and they don't want to start dragging parents into this whole shit. But by the end of the day, Dimongo said all these things about the brother rotting in jail, about their mom being so greedy, about their father who is useless at home and they don't care if he dies or something. All these things she said. All the girls that were in the Philippines, they were there, Dimongo was talking to them. Bad mouthing every person that she has ever met in her life. From Miss Trudy, Miss Dosha, Sean Arwa, African Tigress and the rest. Every person, every single person that Dimwango has ever met. Everything. The things that she used to tell them about JB when she was still with JB together. Oh guys, I'm going to fetch some millions right now. Oh guys, I'll see you. I'm, I'm going to meet blah, 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 blah. I'm going to fetch some millions again. <laughs> hey, Dimwango, you want these people to start telling this? You know, sometimes some people look at these things as petty things to, you know, to, to pull around all over the place. But it is what it is. She did, she did say all these things. That's why you see she's not saying anything because if she says no, all the other receipts will come out. All of them to prove, just to prove. Everything that she wrote, all the conversations, she, she did with that man, Dante, and she released them. They're out there circulating into these people. And she's out, out here to say, I can only talk to people who are 400 subscribers. Did Dante have 400 subscribers, 400,000 subscribers? Hmm? All these people have been meeting all over the place. Did they have 400,000 subscribers? I don't know who is that. And we are going to watch Dimwango very closely. We want to see the people that she's meeting. And by the way, someone was writing to me the other day telling me that she's now begging and telling people that she needs someone. She's not coming back to Kenya. She'll do her Christmas in uh, Jamaica. And now she's looking for someone to host her. Hey, Jamaicans, take charge. Me, I cannot tell someone, don't host Dimwango or host Dimwango. But, host Dimwango at your own risk. It's so simple. It is so simple. Once she's done with you, she's done with you. And Cherono said that in her video. It's only that when she goes and when she's coming back, she starts reminding you, oh, how are you? But when she's gone, she's gone. She forgets about you. You are gone. You are done. Unless if you want to come back and start bowing for her. <laughs> hey, guys, there is more to this. There's more to this. And it's happening right here on the streets. Right here on our faces. We are not going to dig any information from somewhere else. 
everything is happening here on the streets. They are opening, opening their nyash, just like this in front of our faces. And then they say, oh, oh, reactors are saying this. What are we saying? We are talking about the things that they are brought out here on the streets. In my channel here, I, I don't insult people. I don't call people names. If you are Dimwango, you are Dimwango. If you are Marwa, you are Marwa. If you are Mistudi, you are Mistudi. AT, you are AT. Cherono, you are Cherono. Whoever he is, whoever. Their name, their name. I don't call people names here. And I don't expect people to call me names as well. Call me whatever you want to call me. But by the end of the, but by the end of the day, the truth is here. Accept it or don't accept it. But the truth is here, guys. <laughs> like this video. Leave your comments down below. Let's interact there. You know, in the comment section. Let's understand what's going on on the streets. What have we learned? Have you? Anyway, subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed and also check on my store, my merchandise over there just to support my channel as well. I will really, really appreciate. As these exposures continue, the exposing is exposing. Eh? How do you say it, guys? The expose is exposing. <laughs> yes, we are here. There's no way we are going. We are here to always analyze criticize, expose them, agree or disagree, you know, respectively. Guys, thank you so much for your love and support. I really appreciate. Let's meet on the next one.